Hello, some subscribers were uh, giving me the comment that they want a video on polymer composite materials. However, I do have a playlist of polymers. So, I thought uh, I should make a video uh, very soon. So, here I am. Hi, I am Neha and today we are going to discuss about polymer composite material. Now, polymer composite is obviously composite of polymer. That means it's a combination. When it is a combination, there you could have two or more materials. So, polymer composite is when you mix two or more materials then they show a significant proportion of the properties i think ye record nahi hua hai fir se banate hain chup Hello, uh, so some of the subscribers were commenting that they want me to make a video on polymer composite materials. So here I am, uh, I do have a playlist of polymer, but let's discuss polymer composite materials for today. Hi, I'm Neha and in this video, I'm going to tell you what is polymer composite and how do you classify them, where do you use them. So, polymer composite is basically a combination of two or more material. Obviously, there has to be a polymer and if it is a composite, then it's mixture of two, three things. So, it's a combination of two or more materials and it shows a significant proportion of the properties of all materials. So, if you're mixing them together, obviously, you're mixing them with the aim to get an improvised version of polymer. So, obviously, the polymer composite will show the properties of all the materials. And the composite is basically, uh, you can call it as a multi-phase material, wherein these two, three uh, components are mixed and they are separated with an interface, with a boundary, so that they do have their individuality. At the same time, you prepare them artificially. Polymer composite basically is having two major constituents in it. The first one is a matrix and the second one is a dispersed phase. Now here, if you can look at the diagram, the entire major portion, bulk portion would be of a matrix. So the matrix is also known as body constituent or the bulk phase because it provides the major portion, the major phase to the polymer composite. However, you are mixing the matrix with certain materials in order to improve the property. And those materials are known as dispersed phase. Obviously, they would be in a lesser amount. So, they are known as dispersed phase. They are also known as reinforcing material because you are enforcing, reinforcing some properties, specific properties in the bulk phase. Also, sometimes they provide structure to the major compact, major product. So, they are also known as a structural constituent. So, basically, the composite contains either, either it's compulsory that it will have a matrix because that is the bulk form. That is the major enclosure of the composite. And the second would be your dispersed phase, which determines the internal structure of the composite. Now, if I go ahead with the main phase, bulk phase, uh, which is the metric phase. So, obviously, what is the role? It is going to bind the entire material, first of all. It is going to keep the dispersed material safe from the damage. It acts as a medium by which, you know, uh, the applied load is transmitted and distributed equally to all dispersed phase and at the same time it prevents the propagation of the cracks so matrix phase has its own role now matrix could be of two three types the first one is polymer matrix constituent second is metal matrix constituent and the third is ceramic matrix constituent so if you take polymer as the major matrix you will call it as a pmc if you are taking metal as the major matrix then it would be mmc and if you are calling as a ceramic Say, for example, if you are taking alloys, so there the metals are there as the major format. So, it is MMC. Uh, say, for example, uh, you are taking uh, ceramic like concrete. So, the concrete uh, would have uh, the, the ceramic as the major constituent. And sometimes the E-tables like glucose and all, they, they are polymer constituents. Now, uh, coming to the dispersed phase. So, we have seen how the matrix is divided, right? The matrix is divided in three portions. The dispersed phase is divided in four portions, fiber, particulate, flakes and whiskers. 
Further, the fibers could be continuous or discontinuous that I'll tell you later on in the same video. In continuous, you could have three, uh, you know, uh, examples like glass, carbon and armid fiber available in the market. And in discontinuous, again, you have two options aligned or randomly oriented. But uh, well, let us uh, know one by one in the coming slides. So, let us go ahead with first fiber, then particulate then plagues and then whiskers. What are fibers? They look like this. Like one of the example is glass fiber. Now glass fibers, how are they uh, made? They are just produced by forcing out the glass melt through small orifice. The small orifices are there and then the glass melt is uh, pushed basically from that orifice and uh, that immediately cooled and that's how the fiber is made. Uh, they are very popular basically they are readily available low in cost and etc uh, etc et but with respect to application if I say they are used in manufacture of boards for obviously the reason of cost and maintenance uh, specifically with large ships basically are constructed in steel so what they do is they make a glass fiber reinforced polymer that means glass fiber is used as a dispersed phase in reinforcing the polymer. Now coming to carbon fiber, uh, this looks like this and what are carbon fibers are nothing but the carbon uh, organic fibers uh, made uh, by the pyrolysis method. They are also very popular and they have high amount of applications commercially available, high quality sports equipment, tennis racket frames, gold cuff, fishing rod laptops, cameras, construction of aircraft, body of the F1 racing car, luxury car or protective gear for motorcyclists etc. So lot many applications are there. Uh, armed fiber are basically polyamide and they are fibers which are used in fabrics for protective clothing. Generally firefighters uh, use them. They are basically polymers like Kevlar and Nomex, uh, polyamide. Uh, certainly sometimes they are used uh, in a uh, protective uh, wear also bulletproof also depending on the uh, mixing uh, what do they normally use and they are usually uh, like in aviation in helicopter rotor blades in a sport to make the tennis and squash rackets etc so armed fiber also have their role now basically uh, all uh, like commercialized product if you see right now in the market they are normally polymer composite because only polymer uh, does not suffice the requirement. You have to have uh, a mixture of two three things. So similarly now if you mix the things in the form of a particle it becomes a particulate. Earlier we were uh, mixing it in the form of fiber. Fiber is basically a thread, thread kind of thing right a uh, long uh, compound while particulates are in the form of a uh, particle basically. Now because of the uh, particle nature it improves the performance at higher temperature the surface hardness is also increased particulates and then coming to the flakes uh, the flakes are two-dimensional geometry uh, in comparison to you know uh, particles and fibers they can be packed more efficiently for example, mica is used in electrical and heat insulating applications. Coming to whiskers, uh, they are very thin single crystal and uh, they have high strength uh, but uh, the only problem with respect to their commercialization is their high cost. Coming to dispersed phase again, uh, what we did was fiber, particulate, flakes and whiskers and then in fibers you have continuous and discontinuous. Uh, let us go in detail then in the composite first. So polymer composite basically can be divided based on how the reinforcing is done. If the reinforcing is done in the form of particle, it is known as particle reinforced composite. If the reinforcing is done in the form of a fiber, it is known as fiber reinforced composite. And lastly, it is known as a structural composite if the reinforcing is done in the form of sheets, the entire sheets are reinforced. Now here the particle reinforced, fiber reinforced and structural composite is the classification of polymer composite. Let me revise you that the composite have two phases. First is matrix phase and which is the major bulk phase and the second is dispersed phase. Now based on dispersed phase that whether the dispersed phase is particle, flakes, whiskers and all polymer uh, can be classified further. So this is the classification chart of polymer composite. I will do that one by one. Let us discuss particle reinforced composite. Now when you are adding particle to it 
what are you doing you are adding particle uh, to the polymer composite right then you have two three options either uh, you add the particle as a large particle or you add the particle as a dispersed particle now let me tell you what are they uh, basically large particle uh, composite means that the interaction is not at atomic level means you have a matrix right and then uh, you have a dispersed phase uh, dispersed phase is particle here right now this dispersed phase particle size could be either greater than matrix or could be less than matrix right now if it is greater than matrix then it is known as large particle composite now like fillers like wood sheaves metal piece etc carbon black is added to vulcanized rubber to enhance the property concrete is the large particle composite because you know you you mix cement uh, with certain pebbles and all right the cement is a smaller size but when you increase uh, uh, the size like you add pebbles to it it becomes concrete so that is how it is large particle uh, composite other examples are also there like cements and reinforced rubber where you add carbon black and all so that is uh, all about large particle now second is dispersion strength third when the dispersion particle is having a size lesser than the matrix so the interaction will occur at the atomic level so uh here uh, the examples could be alloys basically like uh, you have one of the alloy which is uh, tdn uh, thoria dispersed nickel so thoria dispersed nickel what happens is uh, when i have to use a nickel but then uh, it is uh, having a problem when you use it at high temperature so what you do you mix thoria with the nickel so that the tdn which is formed has a high temperature so stability right so that is one of the example then one more example like aluminium matrix wherein you reinforce fine particle of aluminium oxide so a uh, composite particle reinforced is done that means i am reinforcing it with a particle first now if the particle is larger there is no uh, atomic level interaction it becomes large particle reinforced composite and second is dispersion strengthened when the reinforcing is done by a smaller particle i hope now it's clear to you this is uh, you can uh, you know remember by this only large particle means the dispersed phase is larger in comparison to that of body now i'm going to the second type which is a structural and it could be of two types laminate or sandwich panel now structural basically uh, laminate it means that uh, you are making uh, a stack of the sheets right when you are making stack the major uh, stack which you are using in between the entire sheet which you are using as a reinforcing uh, should be in high strength right but if the uh, the sheet which you are adding as a dispersed phase is not in high strength it's less dense uh, than the two outer surfaces then it is sandwich panel so you have laminar composite and you have sandwich panel so basically in landwork uh, laminar composites what happens for example plywood laminates and all the dispersed phase which you are adding is quite dense and having high strength while in case of sandwich panel whatever sheet you are adding it is not adding to the strength it is not dense it is less dense than that of the matrix so what we have done is particle reinforced if the particle is large if the particle is small structural that means when the sheet is harder or is having denser uh, material than that of matrix or if the dispersed phase is less dense or in less in strength with that of matrix so strength high strength low particle size high particle size low now i'm coming to the third one which is fiber reinforced composite now continuous where in uh, continuous and aligned and in discontinuous you have two aligned and randomly oriented let us see one by one continuous and aligned look like this you can see the uh, fiber is completely reinforced throughout the system right from the start of the system to the end of the system that is continuous and aligned and that's how it's an isotropic in nature i'll not go in much in detail uh, with respect to this uh, today aim is to just to show you how the reinforcing is done if you want me uh, to discuss this in detail please mention in the comments i'll do that today's topic is only related with a short note on polymer composite and its classification coming to the discontinuous and aligned now can you see the discontinuity in between right in continuous it was continuous from starting to end 
right that was continuous this one is discontinuous it may start from somewhere but it will end from somewhere then again it will start and it will end so that is the difference and then uh, there is a third type which is discontinuous and randomly oriented you can see the fiber length you know it is discontinuous and it is randomly oriented it is not aligned in a particular fashion horizontal or vertical but it is random and it helps actually this randomness is helping it to sustain sustain multi directional stress so if the stress is coming from here or from here or from here any direction this particular dispersed phase can bear the load so that is how it is also important so why discussing with frc that is fiber reinforced composite uh, while designing what you have to think on is the three factors the first one is the critical length of the fiber at least a minimum length is required to reinforce you cannot have shorter than that otherwise it would not be effective secondly is orientation of fiber like at what angle you need to have it like this like this like this and that's it and third one is concentration of fiber a minimum concentration is required like if a minimum concentration is 4 and you have done the reinforcing with two only then that is not sufficient so what you have to do is to do the full calculation of what is the critical length required what is the critical orientation and what is the critical concentration of fiber so with that i think uh, you are able to understand that polymer composite uh, could be classified on the basis of dispersed phase with respect to three if it is reinforced with particle it is known as particle reinforced composite if you are reinforcing a fiber if it is it is known as frc and if you are using the flakes or the complete sheet it is known as a structural composite further they can be classified as the particle is larger in size to that of matrix if it is smaller or equal in the size to that of matrix fiber if they are continuously aligned throughout the uh, material if they are discontinuous in between they are discontinuous then if they are aligned in the same direction or they are randomly placed then coming to laminates when the inside sheet is more in strength to that of the surface while if it is in less in strength then it is known as sandwich panel so with that i have come to the end of the presentation i hope you have uh, like the content please do hit like that will give me motivation and do mention and comment if any other topic you would like me to cover thank you so much